Hello and welcome to our best bets video for NFL week three, four, week four. All right. Great start to the video, Matt. So to this week, we are going to be going over our best bets like we do every single week. But before we get into our picks, we like to go over last week's picks and give you guys analysis. A reminder that this video is not supposed to be a pick service. It's supposed to be giving betting analysis, you guys giving your own betting analysis, and giving you an insight to how we make our picks so you're able to make your picks with how you feel about the games, with the statistics that you like to use, and so on. So let's get into this NFL betting report card for last week. And Jason... Go ahead and you talk first since you just are so great at this and you're just the best. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I felt good to get a, a nice little two in a week in there. Um, we'll start with the Baltimore game, uh, and I think that one, got it It did have me nervous because the, pa the Patriots were just having these weird plays where, like, Mac Jones was scrambling for 12 yards, and I'm like, they're going to just, they're just going to cover somehow. Like, they, I just know it. Um but Lamar, I mean, just too much for them. Uh, I knew the Pats defense was going to struggle against this pass unit. That's that's looking really, really good, I feel like, to start the year. Um, and then you also had the rushing attack. I thought also, you know, J.K. Dobbins back, you know, didn't obviously have a huge chunk, but, like, Justice Hill broke one off. The, off, the offensive line looked better, even though, like, they did get injured towards the end of the game, um, which is something concerning coming into next week against the Bills. But good cover there. Um Definitely going to be picking on the Pats, I feel like, a lot this year, but you're probably not going to get great numbers now that Mac Jones is out for the next few weeks. Um, going to Rams-Cardinals, this is another one. This is just The Cardinals' offense is, is just such a mess right now. We saw the Rams' defense play really solid for, the kind of, I feel like, the first time this year. Um, offensively, they didn't kind of thrive as much as I expected them to, but, I mean, still covered here, and I thought that was why you were getting such a great number. And the fact that Stafford also limited turnovers, didn't have a pick in this one, was was probably end up being a, a potential difference maker given this did finish at eight. So um, I, I know you're going to be hammering against the Cardinals once again this week. So, As tradition on this channel. Um, I think I think we've bet against them as a best bet every single week. So first one, I, I'm going to give myself a little bit of generosity. I said in the video, if Houston was at plus three or more, take the spread. If they weren't, I'm okay with the money line. And by the time this video got posted, it was plus three and it stayed plus three for the entire week so i'm gonna say it at plus three and give myself a push instead of the loss on the game bane analysis for this one i think it's kind of exactly what i expect i knew chicago would be able to run the ball i knew they wouldn't be able to pass i knew houston would be able to run the ball um i guess the one place is i thought davis mills was gonna do a little bit better brandon cooks really didn't do much in this game and i think if he would have just got a couple big plays or a couple medium-sized plays this this game could be completely different um, but they re really struggled in the air. Now, a little bit it's on Davis Mills, but I do think the wide receivers weren't getting o as open as I would like, so give credit to Chicago secondary on that one. Um, ends up being a push, not too big of a deal. Kansas City minus six and a half. I, I can't get lucky this season, it feels like, when it comes to picks. Uh, we had a total of at least a 13-point swing when it comes to special teams. We had... The muffed punt, which led to seven points for Indianapolis. We had a missed field goal. We had, for some reason, the decision to go for a fake field goal. Chris Jones. Um, yeah. It, it, it's just 13 to arguably 20 points in this game swung because of special teams. And I, I just wasn't expecting that. Even if I feel like a sharp better was like Indianapolis definitely has the special teams, you know, check mark, which I don't think they did going into this game. I don't know how you project that big of a swing, so I'm not going to beat myself up on this loss. I've definitely had way worse picks, I think, even this season. I think this was a fine pick. If Kansas City's offense plays a little bit better, they they, they could have covered, but it, it really came down to that weird special teams play calling and bad special teams performance. Then Carolina, this is the same thing as Houston. I said if they get to plus three or more, I would just take their spread, but they never got more than two, so I... Got their money line at plus 125. This one, I think I was pretty spot on. I thought Carolina's defense was going to hold New Orleans to very few points, and that's what they did. Carolina's offense did what they've been doing all season, which is barely chugging along, relying heavily on CMC, then having one giant play from LaVishka Chenault, Robbie Anderson, and DJ Moore, who are incredible playmakers. And you know what? I'm kind of okay with that. It's ugly. It's not fun <laughs> as a person watching the game as a better. But if their defense is going to continue to play at 
a very, very good level. And these guys are going to continue to make one-off plays to uh, kind of compensate for the fact that Baker Mayfield can't get a ding third down conversion even though there's open wide receivers all over the field. I'll take it. Um, and I think you're going to continue to get some decent value on Carolina through the season. So our record so far, Jason 3-2, he's up almost a unit. I'm 4-4-1. Four, four, and one. Because of the Carolina money line, I'm basically even on units at this point. So let's get into the picks for this week. And I guess I'll go first since I have three and you have two. And my first one is going to be, I think, maybe, I mean, if you want to co-sign on this one, Jason, we could split the analysis because I think we're both all over the Browns at minus one and a half. Um, I'll go first. I The Browns' offense is st stupidly efficient. I mean... <laughs> They're number three in DVOA, number two for rush DVOA. They're going up against Atlanta defense. That's 27th in defensive DVOA. Yes, Atlanta's offense is way better than I gave them credit for before the season started. It is. And I really don't think the Browns have been performing up to standard. And Atlanta's going to be able to score points in this game. They're not going to have the ball very much. Nick Chubb, Kareem Hunt, they're going to be very, very, very efficient. Jacoby Brissett, after that terrible week one performance against Carolina, he's been fine. He really has. Amari Cooper's been getting open. Donovan Peoples-Jones has been getting open. He's just been doing what he needs to do, which is clutch up on third and five, make that big play on a play action on, you know, second and three. That's all they need Brissett to do in this game especially, and he will. I have no idea why this game is under a field goal spread. Um, I mean, I personally would have it like four, five and a half, but I would even understand three at minus one and a half. It's a, it's a must bet for me. If it's a trap, it's a trap. I... I have no idea how I'm not taking the Browns in this one against Atlanta. Jason, if you want to talk about it. Yeah, I think this, the spread is really the most intriguing factor here is this basically comes down to a pick em. Um And, you know, for me, like, I, I know there's some potentially things to watch out for in the Browns. Miles Garrett, obviously questionable this week coming off what was a car accident, which luckily he escaped with minor injuries. Um, you do have Clowney, who's questionable. He did just lose Walker to the IR, which is a big thing as well. Um but yeah, as you mentioned, I mean, Falcons offense, like, I think we talked about this on a couple of the Sunday breakdowns where I was like, it could be this year that they start kind of putting some, they're just that fun team that covers kind of like last year's Lions. And so far, that's what they've been. Um, but like you said, the fact that Cleveland's rushing attack is going to go up against a really soft Atlanta run defense, be able to control this game. I like Jacoby Brissett and the fact that he just kind of, he's not really doing a ton to like throw games away like he's just doing enough and that's kind of all that the Browns need from him at this point so Browns can you know force more true turnovers from Mariota I think they control this game and and, and win this one even on the road so I, I do like it quite a bit all right so you heard it there Jason's making an official pick for himself too so we can both cry when Cordero Patterson rushes for 250 yards in the ground and wins the game go ahead with your pick Jason I got a couple unders this week. I'm going to start with Jet Steelers under 40 and a half. Um, there's just not a ton of spreads that I like this week that I feel comfortable about. Um, so I'm going to go with the total and two offenses that I just feel like have been horrendous to start the year. Potential chance for Zach Wilson to return. Um, that's been kind of the news reports. I don't love starting him with you know two tackles now on the IR and heading into Pittsburgh. I know there's no TJ Watt, but that's still a very good defense, especially on at home. Um Two teams in the bottom half in offensive DVOA. Two teams with offensive line problems. Jets gave up 27 last week and still hit the under. It's even hard to see Pittsburgh get to 27 this week. Both teams, 28th and 26th in EPA per play. I guess a couple things to mention on the defensive side, like injuries-wise. Minko Fitzpatrick um, dealing with the concussion, see if he can get cleared. Obviously, I like this a little bit more, you know, if he plays, but uh, I'm still feel fairly comfortable with the defenses. And then Williams on the other side for the Jets' defense is out for a while. Um, but I, I still think the Steelers' offensive line is really in shambles. I think there's a big reason why unders are hitting at a high rate this year. It's really soft pass or like really soft pass coverage. They're allowing a lot underneath, and then you factor in that offensive lines are just really in a real poor spot. To, I feel like to start the year. And both teams, you might look and go, oh, they play really high in pace, but that's just because they've been playing from behind for most of the year. When you put them in a neutral game script, everything is really pretty much close to average plays. And 40 and a half, like relying on either of these teams to kind of get to basically 20 plus points, I, I think is it, it's a pretty tough ask from both these offenses. So uh, I'm on the under here. Zach Wilson, sleeper notification just came through. He is playing this week. As someone who has... 
a bet on Zach Wilson's points per game against Justin Fields. What timing? Really did it want him to play this week. I was really hoping the Steelers game would be avoided, but you know what? I mean, I like this pick, but I will say the one place the Jets have looked great is their skill position players have looked fantastic. And it's like, yeah. if this offensive line gets healthy next year, Zach Wilson, you know, does take a step forward. It could be really good. But I agree with you that it's such a key piece, the offensive line. I've seen it year after year for the Vikings for the past 12 years. It's like you can have all the skill position players in the world. If your quarterback's getting hit within the first second of dropping back, it doesn't matter. And I could see that happening quite a bit against the Steelers when you have Flores and Tomlin who know how to scheme blitzes. Um, that's what scares me most. And then the other side, the Steelers just don't know how to call an offensive game plan, so they'll never score a lot of points in a game. <laughs> that's... So I really I like this bet. I think it ends up being like worst case like twenty four seventeen, which would barely hit. So uh, that's where I'm at. All right, my next game is a pick just to upset Mr. Jason Gilbo, and that's the Carolina Panthers again, baby. Woo! Baker Mayfield time. No, this. I literally said before this video started, I love everything about Carolina it, minus Baker Mayfield. And I think I said this last year, I love everything about Carolina minus the quarterback. I think the defense is, it's not quite elite level, but I consistently think it's underrated. I think it's very, very good. I think it's borderline top 10. Probably, I'd rate them 9th or 8th. The ninth or 8th best defense against this Arizona Cardinals offense is going to do very, very, very well. Um, looking at... The pressures allowed, Arizona 25th, and then you look at Carolina's pressure rate, which is 13th. I think that's a recipe for disaster for Kyler Murray and this offense. They can't run to the outsides. They have to run up the middle, and I think doing that is going to play into Carolina's strengths. I love their front seven. I really like their defensive tackles. I think... Everywhere on the Carolina defense, I'm going to say the same thing. I think they're underrated. I really think the perception people have is just slightly a tier below what they actually are. I think this game is going to be great from Carolina. I think they're going to hold Arizona to under 20 points. So that means Carolina has to score 20 on this awful, 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 awful Arizona defense. I'm going to rely heavily on CMC in this game if I'm Carolina. I would once again give him 25, you know, rush attempts. I would hit him in screens five or six times in this game, and I think that alone would be enough to score 21 to 28 points. But I think we, again, factoring in, yes, Baker Mayfield's not good, but luckily Robbie Anderson, LaVishka Chenault, DJ Moore are guys that if you could just get the ball to them anywhere, they have a very good chance of hitting the end zone. It's been incredible so far to watch. I think that's going to happen once again with Arizona's very poor tackling in the secondary. So Carolina minus two at home. I'm making it a best bet. Again, a little worried. I feel like this. I'm getting flashbacks to Vegas against Arizona, where you have a team where Derek or Baker Mayfield, much like Derek Carr, could just fall a ha fall apart in the second half. But I, the fact that it's a much smaller spread, the fact that Carolina's defense I think is a league above the Raiders makes me a lot more comfortable. So, going with them. I don't. I don't know how you do it, man. <laughs> I just. <laughs> It's uh, just having to like the. I completely. I'm in full agreement with the defensive stuff. Like I really like this defense. It's it's full of a bunch of ball hawks. Like they these guys make plays and they're gonna make plays this weekend, and that's what's gonna lead them to cover a lot of games. Um, I don't like the fact that Arizona has to travel to Carolina as well. That's something to know. And the fact that they just start games so poorly. Um, so you like I'm really hoping for your sake, Carolina can just jump off to a lead and make it fairly comfortable because. I don't love that they continuously have to rely on a big 60-yard run from Chanel or Anderson. And the fact that Baker Mayfield just, he's grading in, like, success rate and EPA and all this stuff. He's around guys like Justin Fields and Trubisky and Daniel Jones. And I just don't, I just don't love betting on that. But if you're back in this defense, I mean, that's... Go for People it. People are going to call me crazy. I think you're going to really disagree with this point and hate me for it. But I do think... Matt Rule's play calling is getting better, and he's getting a feel for what Baker Mayfield can do. And I think so. He's just going to run my the whole ball thing. sixty times a game because he can't do exactly. anything. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it, it's like this specific game. It's not. It's not going to be every game for Carolina, but this specific game, they just have to do enough, kind of on offense. And I think 
Matt Rule has learned what you have to do with Baker Mayfield at your quarterback to, to just do enough, and that is very easy passes, a lot of short game. And the thing is, they have the kind of team that's set up for that. Like, their offensive line hasn't been incredible, but they're doing really well in the screen game. They're doing really well on those outside runs. Like, So, uh, again, this also is a big bet because against Arizona because I just, again, think they're not a good team. I, they got lucked out for their one win by the refs in a game they should have lost by 30 if, if Josh McDaniels knows anything about coaching, which he doesn't. We saw that endeavor. Don't know why he's a head coach again, but here we are. All right, next one for you. Uh, going with another under, and another under that's sitting at the same number, 40 and a half. Um, this was a game that I was interested in betting when I saw the lines. And, you know, looking at trends, if you would have locked in last week, it would have been, I think it was right around a touchdown. Uh, but obviously it was up to nine and a half this week. I think the safer play, like, safer play here is just the under, overall under. Um when you look at the Packers, like kind of a notorious under team, despite kind of how we thought how their offense always plays with Aaron Jones, AJ Dillon, even back when they had Devonte Adams. Um, but both teams bottom half per play is this game. Packers are dead last and second per play um, just overall this year, and then twenty six when leading by a touchdown, which is you know their nine and a half point favorites. This is a Packers team that we know kind of drags out games, you know, plays solid defense, like. They're going to take it down. Like, we've just seen this Aaron Rodgers game tape before. Um, Mac Jones out for extended time. I still would even probably, – I probably would have liked the Packers if Mac Jones was in. Um, Jacoby Myers questionable. But even with the Jones, I mean, Pat's 16th in EPA per play. Green Bay's defense, 9th in EPA per play allowed. Like, I know they have the same issues where, where the run defense is graded really poorly and their DVOA numbers are great. But I think the fact that the Packers will be up in this one causing whoever is, is – starting quarterback whether it's it's Hoyer or Zap like I, I think it's going to be tough sledding especially on the road against the secondary and I think we're also going to see the Packers just have a lot of success running the ball and just keeping control of the clock um Pat's 29th in DVOA rush defense Aaron Jones AJ Dillon I think this is a big game for both of them I think we see them kind of grind this game out I think it's going to be one of those ones where it's like 23-7 you know, 24 seven type of game. Like it's just, it's going to be gross, um, especially on the pad side. So for me, I think you get a pretty healthy under here. I just, for some reason, the offense still gives me a little bit of trouble, even though they've looked a little bit better these last few weeks to cover the 10, even though I just gave you two scores to cover the 10. So maybe you can't go pats there as well, but 40 just seems like a really high number for, I think two lackluster offenses. I think it is too high. Um, I know this, I, I've been kind of memeing this, but this is a legitimate, I, for me, a slight worry just because, again, it's sports betting. You don't have to bet anything. You can bet whatever you want. If Bailey Zapp is quarterback, I know it sounds crazy. I'm just, it, he could perform better than we think. But even then, I don't I don't know if that gets to 41, and it probably doesn't, to be honest. Um, Damien Harris or Ramondre Stevenson have been good. I don't think they're nearly good enough to somehow put up enough points. I get like you said. I guess my only concern, I guess maybe the Packers just having an explosive week where Rodgers is like, you know what? I'm gonna pad my stats. Romeo Dubs, you're getting three touchdowns, but I, I even that, I, all of it seems unrealistic to me, which means it's a good bet. It's just those are the things I guess you worry about: is an incredible Aaron Rodgers game, um, or you know, again, if Ho if it's Hoyer, I I I know for a fact he's not gonna do anything. If it's Bailey Zapp and we get an unknown and you know what, he turns out to play better than we think, which I honestly don't think so because I think he'd already be listed as the game day backup if he was. So I'm with you on the under at 40 and a half. If, if you were on the Tampa under at 39 and a half like I was last week, I can't see how you'd be on. You can't, you can't say 40 and a half is a good line for this one. All right, my final game, and it's another one I think this one, actually Jason may agree with me a little bit, so I don't have to hear all the reasons why I'm wrong. Um... The Lions minus four. This is initially, and I think this is the reason the Lions where it's at, is a lot of people are looking at it, including myself, and I was like, ah, oh, four points for the Lions. Get out of here. And then I'm like, wait a second. They're a way better team than the Seahawks. They're a team that should be winning by two scores against the Seahawks. And let's kind of look at the reasons why. Detroit, offensive DVOA, seventh in the league. Rush, offense DVOA, fifth in the league. Yes, no Swift this week. Jamal Williams has been fantastic. And I think he will continue to be fantastic, especially against the Seattle uh, defense. 
Seattle, meanwhile, defensive DVOA 30th, rush defense DVOA 21st, pass defense DVOA 31st. Jared Goff is good enough that if he's going against a 31st ranked uh, passing defense, he's going to play well. We saw a bad Vikings pass defense last week, and he played very, very well. Finding Amon Ross St. Brown, who's a little beat up, but I expect him to play. Finding Reynolds. Reynolds dropped the pass that would have probably sealed the game. Like Detroit should have won last week against Minnesota, and I think that would have ended up being like a three, four point win. Like they're going to beat Seattle by multiple scores, knock on wood. Um, meanwhile, Seattle's offense has been better than expected. 12th in DVOA. But I think here's the key part of why Detroit dominates this game. They don't just win, they dominate. Seattle 20th in pressures allowed. Detroit 10th in pressure rate. I think Hutchinson and this defense will create so much pressure that Geno Smith will not need, he needs time back there, in my opinion, to process it's just who he is as a quarterback, and he's not going to be given that time. Seattle's rush offense has not been good. They performed somewhat well against Atlanta, who's horrible. Detroit, I think, will play a lot better against those running backs. Not at an elite level, but you know, just at a slightly below average level. I'm taking Detroit. I'm, I'm believing in this rush offense. I'm believing in Jared Goff to hit those passes. And I just have no faith that Seattle's going to move the ball with efficiency this game, even though they have been somewhat doing it. Because I think they're going to give up way too many pressures for Geno Smith's liking. Yeah, I think it's a good bounce back spot for Detroit. Like you said, they they blew that game against Minnesota. Like they blew it. They should have won that game. Um, I think I, I think we all kind of talked about that one last week. It's like a Detroit cover just because that's what they do. Like under Dan Campbell, they cover games. They're always going to be really competitive. And now it's just weird to see them in a favorite spot. Um, so minus four here at home. It, it opened up, you know, right around a touchdown, and then, you know, you had Tracy Walker hit the IR. Um, you had, obviously, the De- DeAndre Swift news, and then uh, Amon St. Brown is just going to be a guy who we will need to kind of monitor. But, like, Josh Reynolds, DJ Chark, you know, TJ Hawkinson, Jamal Williams, like you said, is a really good backup for Swift, and we've seen him be productive. And the offensive line, like, despite the injuries, have been moving the ball still, and I really like that. Like, they're top 10 in EPA per play. You mentioned Seattle's defense is, is extremely weak. Like, they're dead last in EPA per play allowed, and they're going to put up points. Um, you know, I, I I think the four numbers is a little bit of an interesting spot just because, say, that Geno Smith does kind of put some drives together, but... Yeah, I'm weirdly comfortable back in this Lions team right now just because of, of how well-coached they actually are, even though a little bit of late-game mismanagement last week against Minnesota, but they're aggressive. They, we know they're, they're going to put points. You give time to Jared Goff, he's going to he's gonna be fine. Like, it's only really him under pressure that struggles. So uh, with Seattle having a lack of pass rush, like I fully back this Lions offense to, to move the ball. Yeah, and, and I'm hoping that those late game decisions aren't even a decision for Dan Campbell. I'm hoping they're up by enough that that's not going to matter. Um, to, to what I said, Jamal Williams, like Swift was obviously injured last week, but Jamal Williams looked better than Swift. I think with that injury. So it's better that they're just going to sit Swift and you have Jamal. I think it's it's overall better. And then the stat that everyone's using is no one's touching these running backs until they're six yards down the field. This offensive line is legitimately going to give, I think, Cleveland a run for its money for best in the league when it comes to rushing the football. Like, Jamal Williams has nothing in front of him. He has giant holes. He's six yards down the field, and then he's allowed to lower his shoulder and make one move, and then all of a sudden it's a 10-yard play. That's why these guys are averaging six, eight yards a carry a lot of the time. And Seattle's like, the wor- they are legitimately the worst tackling defense they've faced so far, so who knows what's going to happen. Um, I It could... DK Metcalf, I mean, that's the only thing to really be scared of. But like I said, is he going to have time to get the ball to DK Metcalf? And if he does, I don't think it's going to be down the field. So it's going to be hard for Seattle to put up points, in my opinion. All right. Our picks for this week. Cleveland Browns minus one and a half for the both of us. Under now 41 for the Jets and Steelers at minus 105. That's probably the Zach Wilson news. You get a nice uh, point bump (laughs) because it's a Flacco. Uh, somewhere Jacob is shaking his fist and running to go bet that now. Carolina Panthers, minus 2 at minus 110 for myself. Under 40.5 for Patriots Packers at minus 110. And then Detroit Lions, minus 4 at minus 115. Thank you guys for watching. As always, you can click the like button if you like this video. Hit the dislike button if you did not. Comment down below your best bets for this game. 
Go ahead and hit subscribe if you want to see more content like this. You can also click the bell to get notified when our videos go up. Lineups.com's got you covered with all our betting, all your betting analysis needs. You can find our betting analysis on there. And you can also find sportsbook reviews, state legal guides, and promo codes. All right. Thank you guys for watching, and we'll see you next time.